Did you know that sodium isn't just table salt? It's an essential electrolyte your body needs for survival. It's the third most essential element after oxygen and water. And it's why it's the third module. But here's the catch. Too much sodium can be just as dangerous as too little. Let's dive in. Today, we're gonna talk about sodium's role in the body. Again, this is the third essential nutrient and we mainly get sodium through salt. And we're gonna go into all the skinny. So let's go. Sodium is vital for hydration, nerve function, and muscle activity, plus a bunch of other stuff, but that's gonna be in other modules. These are the main things I want you guys to know because these things will change your life. Hydration regulator. So sodium helps your cells absorb and retain water. Going back to hydration again, right? But also electrolyte balance. Sodium works with potassium and magnesium to prevent cramps. And this is why the quality of sodium is so important. We'll get into this later. But one of the other extremely important roles of sodium, if not probably the most important, well, hydration is super important, but nerve transmission. This sends electrical signals from your brain to your muscles. Pretty dang important, right? And the one that we all know when we talk about sodium, blood pressure control. Sodium helps maintain the fluid balance in blood vessels. And I know what we've all been told, if you have too much sodium, your blood pressure is gonna go too high. And I'm gonna debunk that shit and get into the skinny with you guys so you're actually educated properly. But did you know your brain relies on sodium to fire neurons? Without enough sodium, your mental clarity, reflexes, and memory can dramatically decline. Now let's talk about the caveat of what are the dangers of too much or too little sodium. Sodium deficiency is known as hypoatremia, and it can lead to the swelling of your brain, confusion, <laughs> and fatigue. Can also correlate to muscle cramps, weakness, low blood pressure, dizziness, and an increased risk of heat stroke and high temperatures. This is what most people deal with. Too much sodium is known as hyperatremia, and the causes of it can be mitigated by consuming the right type of sodium. But if we're consuming processed foods and then we're eating table salt, we're eating the worst type of sodium. And this is typically what we see happen to people that consume too much processed foods and table salt in the form of sodium. Number one, high blood pressure and heart disease. Yeah, these wacky forms of sodium aren't the most ideal for us. Also, retaining water, causing bloating and swelling. This ultimately leads to kidney strain, leading to toxin buildup. Did you know over 70% of sodium intake comes from processed foods and not salt shakers? This is exactly what I was just mentioning, right guys? These processed sodium lacks the trace minerals. Ding, ding, ding. This is the key element to realize, making it harder for the body to use it efficiently and effectively. So here's why you should be mineralizing your water and your food with the right type of sodium. <coughs> sea salt. But before we go into that, let's talk a little bit more about water and sodium connection. You see, many water filtration systems strip essential minerals like sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And even though it's important because they're getting out the toxins, they're also taking out everything. And that's why some people call it dead water. So we want to remineralize our water because it is so crucial for proper hydration so that the minerals can help absorb into the cells, electrolyte balance to help prevent dehydration, and fatigue and to help regulate our pH. It's just helping the body maintain an alkaline balance. And we all know if we're over acidic in our tissues, this is where disease thrives. And did you also know distilled or reverse osmosis water, you'll hear it being called as dead water because it lacks essential minerals needed for optimal hydration. However, we need to filter our water because it's loaded with all other types of toxins and pollutants. 
Here's how to create mineral enriched hydrating water. Step one, choose your mineral source from nature, from the ocean, not synthetics. So sea salt or trace mineral drops from the ocean. Step two, add a pinch of this sea salt or drops of trace minerals to your water. I like to do both, but if you don't like how salty the water tastes by putting the sea salt in your water, you can actually take the sea salt and go directly in your mouth. And as long as you have a few trace minerals in your water, and if you don't have trace minerals and you just have sea salt, that's okay too. But you've got to add something to your water. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add sea salt or trace minerals to your water and you're going to stir those up and let it dissolve. That's it guys. Enjoy the best tasting, most hydrating water. And did you know ancient cultures drank naturally mineral rich waters from springs? This is what helped boost energy and longevity. And if you have a spring that you can get water from or purchase water at a store from a spring, I highly suggest you consume these waters. And that's why I opt to filter first.